tell me about your lady friend, your life partner. Uh, the love of my life. She was a, a very beautiful person. Uh, I met her when I was 27 year old and uh, we were lovers for 32 years. And uh, I had good times and bad times with her. But uh, unfortunately she ain't here no longer. So uh, I, tried to, I tried to forget that and move on with my life all kind of it brings back memories and I really don't need that right now. Now, how many years ago did she pass away? Uh, she's been deceased for uh, right around four or five years now. You were telling me you miss her every day, right? Yes, ma'am. I laid up under a bridge and cried for three years. Was she also homeless with you? No, ma'am, we had a home. We had a good life together. I had a home, I had a good job. She had a good job. And uh, uh, right, to right towards the end, it just all fell apart. And I went to Texas to get a job, to sit back and get her. And when I called back up there, she was gone. They said she'd, she'd passed. And uh, I stayed down there for two or three years. Then my brother got ill. And uh, they told me if I didn't make it back, I would probably never get to see him again. So I came back and it took me 19 days to get from Texas back to Kentucky. And uh, by the time I got back, he was gone too. So Were you hitchhiking? Lost, yes, ma'am. I lost my, uh, my mother, my oldest sister, my woman, and my baby brother all within one year. And uh, it ripped my world apart. I would think so. I mean, you can't be with someone that many years and not feel the tragic loss of them, right? right? right. Now, what did she pass away from? A uh, drug overdose. Oh. Now, did you know that she was doing drugs? I did, but I begged her not to do them, and she ignored what I, what I asked her to do. She ignored me. Okay, it, it, she'd, passed, she'd uh, done it once before on the same thing, and they revived her and brought her back, but this time they weren't able to bring her back because okay, she was already gone. But uh, I tried to warn her and tell her, and she wouldn't listen to me, so there's really nothing I can do about it, you know? It's now, not... what is the one thing about her that you miss the most? I see a smile on your face. <laughs> uh, I miss it. I miss everything about her. Was she a good cook? She's a good cook. Great cook. What was her specialty? Uh, uh, she didn't really have a specialty. She was a. Uh, uh, she was real good at making uh, uh, spaghetti, meatloaf, stuff like that, lasagna. Uh, things like that. I done most of the cooking. I'm. I'm a. I'm a chef. I was a cook, I was a chef, and a baker. I was a prep chef in Florida at Area 91 Squadron uh, Airport in Orlando. And in, uh, in Kentucky State Penitentiary, I was a, a cook. And in Ohio State Penitentiary, I was a, a baker. No, you seem to have very fond memories of her. If you could say one thing to her, if she was here right now, what is one thing you'd like to say to her? I love you and I want you back. Oh. But that's not going to happen. You were telling me that you hope to meet her again mm. in heaven. Her. I will meet her again. If she's in heaven and I make it to heaven, we will meet there. Well, that's what the, the, the good word says. It says... Uh, what you bond with here on the earth, you will bond with in heaven. And if, you know, if they're not there, then you won't miss them. They won't even know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a firm believer in scripture and the Lord Jesus Christ. So I don't know. I can't understand why people say, well, uh, uh, who's a Christian? Uh, well, uh, I like to know what is a Christian? Who is a Christian? Uh, okay, a lot of these people out here that claim to be Christians, are no different than anybody else. 
They're, they are Christian only in name, right? Right, basically. And a lot of people today uh, in society, people are out to glorify people. They're not out to glorify God. They're, uh, they're people pleasers. Uh, and uh, that's the same people that crucified Jesus. People that were like that. Right. And I don't know. I have no right to talk about nobody, so I'll just let that go. You were very young when you met her, right? Oh, yes, no, I was 27. That's still young. Mm -hmm. How did you meet each other? I just came from Florida to up here, and she was across the street, and I just went over and started talking to her. <laughs> and then not long later, uh, she asked me to move in with her. So you put your eyes her. on her, huh? So I moved in. I moved <laughs> in with her. Yes. I said, you put your eyes on her, and I, you said... I sure did. Yes. I like her. <laughs> yeah. She was well, very, very likable. Mm -hmm. I've known you for a while now, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, every time I see you, you always have a great big smile, just like well, that. Well, you're, you're uh, always wanting to take a picture of me, video. <laughs> and uh, not many people do that. I don't let many people do that, to be honest with you. I don't really... I don't really like to take pictures and stuff like that. Well, I feel honored that you trust me enough to share some of your testimony and Thank you. let me take pictures of you. Thank you. Now, today I took your blood pressure. It was just a little elevated, but you said you had been walking a lot, right? Yes. And I told you that that might be the reason why it was slightly right. elevated. I, I, I did walk quite a bit today. I walked uh, I walked all the way from up here to over to the other side of town. Uh -huh. And then I came back to my friend's house and I walked from there to here. So I said I walked a good six or seven miles today. You seem to but do I a do, lot of I walking. Do, I do that every day. Uh, that's how I stay in shape. Uh -huh. And uh, that's how I keep my health. Is uh, through walking and exercise, swimming, running, uh, sports, things like that. Now tell me, uh, you said that you walked all the way from where to? Oh God, <laughs> I, 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 I've been all over the country. I've been to, uh, I've been to Oregon, Washington, California. Uh, hitchhiking? I've hitchhiked to California twice, back in the 1970s. Uh, I've hitchhiked all over the country, Florida, Georgia, so Texas, you, uh, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, you, you name it. Uh, so you're like that song, I'm a rambling man. No, I'm not a rambling man. I'm a wanderer. A wanderer. Okay, yes, so I'm you've a seen wanderer. a lot. I wander around. I'm a wanderer. I'm <laughs> the type of guy that loves to run around and I never settle down. I'm a wanderer. I remember that song. <laughs> that was a movie too. Yeah. They had a movie called The Wanderers. Yeah. And you hitchhike everywhere you go? Yes, ma'am, I do. Do you? Basically, yes. Do you have any difficulty getting picked up? Uh, not really. Uh, I, I try to I try to dress uh, decent. I try to stay clean, and I try not to get in the car with people that are. Uh, are not likable or violent, okay? Oh, I, that looks suspicious. I, I, I let God, I let God uh, guide me, and if if he tear, if he steers me away from it, I don't I don't go towards it, and if he tur turns me to it, I go ahead and you know and do it, okay? And I feel safe. If I don't feel safe, I won't get in a car. I'll tell him, look, just go on, and I'll wait for another ride, you know? Okay, I'm not going to put my life in another person's hands. Have you ever had bad uh, encounters? Uh, one, once or twice, maybe. But other than that, no, ma'am. I've been pretty fortunate. Uh, I've been pretty uh, blessed. I wouldn't call it luck. Uh, I've been blessed. The Lord Jesus Christ has guided me and took care of me most of, most of my life. Yes. He has. Because yes, how old are you now? I'm 62. My goodness. All those years that God has been looking after you, right? Yes, ma'am. Ever since I was a, a child. You've always had that wanderer spirit? Uh, yeah. Uh, my grandmother, uh, she told me that one day, when I was a kid, she said one day I would become a minister. And uh, I do spread the Word of God. And uh, I study the Word of God. I don't just read the Bible. I study the Bible. 
Okay, I, I feel that uh, to get to know him, you have to take time, it takes time. And to get to know him good, it takes uh, meditation. And you gotta meditate and uh, completely give yourself over to him and let him take control of you. Because if you're in control and you're driving the bus, you're gonna wreck and crash. That's right. And I'll let him, I'll let him provide the, provide you know, the transportation and take care of me. So. Uh -huh. Okay, I know if I'm in control, it, it would be over. So, I feel blessed, yes. Now, you said you had one encounter where it was kind of dicey. Well, I, 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 this guy picked me up one time. I was in, uh, I think I was in uh, Miami, Florida. And this guy picked me up and he says, uh, don't try nothing. I got a gun, I got a gun. And I said, look, man, I said, uh, you can let me out right here. I don't want no trouble. I'm not going to try nothing. Just let me out right here. And he said he needs someone to talk to. And uh, I said, okay, go ahead and start talking. And he tell, told me that uh, he'd picked this other guy up earlier that morning. And the guy had pulled a knife out on him and made him go back into the woods. And he said he was, felt like that guy was going to try to kill him or hurt him. And he said he had a gun and he just pulled his gun out and shot the guy and stuffed him in a drain pipe. <laughs> and I don't know if he told me this to scare me or if he told me this to uh, because it was real or what, but uh, he gave me a ride about 200 miles and I got out of his car and went on, you know. Uh -huh. He didn't try to hurt me or nothing like that. He just uh, made a little comment, a little threat and told me his story, I guess. And uh, Well, God was with you and, right and, there in the cab. He's always with me. God is always with me. Uh, he never leaves me and I never leave him. And, and he promised me that, you know. So that was a bad um, kind of experience, but in, in, have you... in a way it was bad, but in another way it really wasn't all that bad because I wasn't harmed. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess I, I helped the man because uh, he needed to uh, get that off his mind. And I was there to listen to him and, no. and to give him an insight on it. Do you have a good experience? I have. I've had very good experiences. Well, hitchhiking? I've been blessed, yes, yes, yes. I've Just had, give me one. I've had multiple people pick me up, give me rides, uh, take me, uh, give me jobs, uh, places to live. Uh, this guy picked me up in California, and I helped him drive from California back to Missouri. And he lived in uh, Miller, Missouri, and he... Uh, he done indoor outdoor carpet and he done it in these uh, lawyer offices and banks and different buildings like that. And I would go and help him do it. And he paid me uh, $4 an hour, uh, bought basically all my food, my cigarettes, and uh, gave me a place to live for about a year and a half. Good. And uh, I've been very fortunate, yeah. Now, right now we're heading to the uh, place where you're don't yes, say the name of the place. We're, we're, I don't really know the name of it. It's a, it's a, a church. I think it's a... It's for an evening a, shelter. A, it's a Methodist church, I believe. And it's uh, for it's, evening uh, shelter, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, Shalom is what they call it, I believe. It's Shalom. And it's a program they do uh, every year, pretty much around here, uh -huh. for the homeless people. And uh, there's uh, they have to have at least, I think, 10 churches that will accept everyone that goes to them mm -hmm. and uh, they basically let you stay there and provide uh, water so you can take a shower some of them have places where you can wash your clothes mm -hmm. take showers and eat and sleep and it's a real good program and they're very nice people and they uh, they're real nice people because they help you and they don't look down on you because you're homeless they look at you as a human being as you are and they accept you as you are. They don't downgrade you, as far as I know. And uh, it's a, it's great. It's a real, good, it's good. A real blessing. So I told you that I'd drive you over there, yes, so you won't have to walk. Yes, ma'am. And listen, I really, truly thank you for sharing your beautiful story. Yes, ma'am. We all have stories to share. Yes, we do. The problem is, not many people are willing to mm -hmm. listen. Right. And not many people are willing to share. share. Yes. But I always think that if God blesses you or he's done something good for you, you should 
tell others, right? Uh, yes, most definitely. Yes. Yes. So, um, I want to thank you, okay? Yes, ma'am. And thank we're you. heading out, like I said, to take you for the place at the. We take. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's cold, okay? Uh, yes. And I'm having a hard time talking. I'm taking you to the place where you're going to stay the evening, which is like a church. And they let the homeless stay overnight, right? Yes, ma'am. And they feed you and they let you yeah. use the facilities. Yes, ma'am. So that's where we're heading, right? Great, yes. On a cold? A cold uh, January night. Yeah. Evening. It's still raining, so, very, very you know, cold, as you can it, see, it, it there's has snow. Been, it has been brutally cold out here. Uh, you know, uh, I think today's temperature was like three below zero. It got down to three below mm -hmm. today. And uh, a couple of days ago, it got down to 13 below. And mm -hmm. this is the kind of weather that kills people. Oh, yeah. That, that's very sad because uh, there are a lot of people that can help people, but they won't help people. And I can understand sometimes why, because the world we live in is so corrupt these days that uh, there's no trust in the world. Yeah. People just don't trust people no more. And you just don't know who to trust, right? Uh, very much, yes. Because some people have double faces, right? Yes, ma'am, they sure do. You never know. Smiling faces. What's that song? I'm da, not da, for sure. Da, do, 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 do. <laughs> I don't know. It's a song. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, face. I'm, I'm not uh, much on the, the uh, I'm a, a, a rocker. Oh, you're <laughs> I'm, a rocker. I'm a rocker. I like rock and roll. And, uh, okay. I like also country, bluegrass, uh, uh -huh. gospel, uh -huh. uh, jazz. I, I like all kinds of different music, but <laughs> I'm more, more into uh, southern rock and roll than anything else. Well, I can't remember who sings that song, but it goes something like smiling faces. They don't tell the truth or something like that. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe um, it'll come to me. <laughs> now, you're wearing a military jacket. Were you ever in the military? No, ma'am. No? No, ma'am. The only army I was in was the Salvation Army. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, is that jacket keeping you warm? It is. Okay. My brother gave me this jacket. My brother's a real big on camouflage, uh -huh. not so much the military, it's the camouflage. And uh, he, uh, when I went and seen him, he hadn't seen me in a couple of years, but it just, he was so happy to see me, you know. He just took his coat off and says, here, take my coat. You know? <laughs> and then my nephew, he gave me a coat, and I'm like, wow, why are y'all giving me all this stuff, you know? I, I, got, I got a coat, you know, but that's just my family, you know. So you do have uh, siblings? Yes, yes. Are you close to them? Uh, the Yeah, the ones that are still alive, pretty much, uh -huh. yes. Okay. I have, uh, let's see, uh, i got four sisters and one brother still alive. I had, uh, there was eight of us all together. And uh, my oldest sister is deceased and my baby brother is deceased. Mm -hmm. And other than that, me, Patricia Ann, Heidi Sue, uh, Bobby and uh, Dill Faye and Norma Jean, we're still here. Your parents are gone? My mother and father are deceased, yes. They've been gone for quite a while now. Were they good um, uh, parents? I can't, I can't really say. My uh, my mother w was, uh, my father, I didn't ever really know my father. He took my sisters away from my mother when we were little and left me with her and uh, I never, never really loved my father. Uh, but your mother was a good woman? Uh, not really. No? <laughs> no. Okay. She was a great woman at the end of her life. Uh -huh. You know, but, but my mother, she went through a lot. Uh -huh. And no matter what, she was beautiful. Uh -huh. And I got to look at it that way. I can't, I can't look at it negative. Uh -huh. Because she did raise us and she was there for us. And, uh, she wasn't the best person in the world, but she was a great person. Maybe honest. she uh, tried. Oh, she did very much. My mother was uh, a holy roller. She she was a, a, a firm believer in Jesus. And at the end of her life, she, mm -hmm. she turned and went the right way. She was with Jesus. I believe in all my heart that uh, my mother will be in heaven. 
I don't think no one's in heaven right now. I think they're all at peace. Everybody's resting at peace right now. That's why they say R-I-P, rest in peace. And I think in uh, Judgment Day, when Jesus comes back and he rises the dead, the Judgment Day, that's when we, he chooses who goes home and who stays, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Now I'm looking at some of your tattoos. Wow. Wow. Have, you got some interesting I got, tattoos. I got some uh, very interesting tattoos. <laughs> my tattoos tell a, a, tell a story. They tell my life story. Like, let me see that tattoo on your hand over there. Which one? This one. Some of them are a little uh, hard That to... is a ganji. It's an Indian word for highly potent marijuana, especially used for smoking. Oh. Uh, that is a... a 12 juries and one judge and a half ass chance of getting out of it if you get caught by them. What? 12 <laughs> juries, one judge, and a halfway chance of getting out of it if you get caught by them. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't understand uh, that, but... Well, you, when you go to court, you got 12 juries, oh, yes. one judge, uh -huh. and a halfway chance of getting out of it. Oh, okay, 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 I see. And then you got, I got a, a little bitty dagger across. Oh, yeah, your dagger. Uh, uh, Kentucky Kid, Mom and Pop, uh, uh, Dead Man's Hand. I got some uh, all kinds of different tattoos. Listen, we're we're all over the place with this video, right? Yes, ma'am. We're talking about all kinds of things. It's like a, a, a documentary of my uh, life story. <laughs> yeah, it's like a s mixture of everything, right? Uh, yes, in a way it is. But, but uh, see, I, I love asking people questions. I love hearing people's stories because right. everybody has a story to tell mm -hmm. and unless you speak no one's going to know right? Right, right and i find them interesting i find people interesting that's why i'm always looking for interesting people right. to share their stories sure. <laughs> but listen we got to get you to where you need to go yes, because it's a little 404 yeah, 404, mm -hmm. and you need to head. Uh, yes, that's just, uh, uh, it don't take long. Maybe we'll be up there in about 15, 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Okay. About 15 minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes. It ain't far. It's just okay. a, I think a one, two, three. Thank you again. probably about seven blocks, maybe. Mm -hmm. Seven blocks away from here. All right. Mm -hmm. Well... I want to thank you again for sharing your beautiful story. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it all started with you telling me about your life partner, how sad you were, right. that you miss her a lot. Yes, ma'am. And I said, would you mind talking a little bit about her, right. sharing that story? Mm -hmm. And then we went into another Other thing. story. And, and, and another one. Uh -huh. But that's the way life but is, right? That's, that's okay, yes, yes. It's, that's how we get to know each other. That's how people, uh, if you, if you, if you don't open up and you hold everything inside, it blows up on you. So sometimes it's good to talk about things like that. And also, life is about different stories. Uh, yes. One story after another right, until we right. finally leave the stage, right? Right, right. <laughs> yes, yes, very much. All right. Thank you again for sharing your beautiful story, all right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any last words? Um what words of wisdom do you want to share in closing? Words of wisdom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, we all have a backpack that we carry around. And our backpack is our brain. And sometimes it gets so much junk in it and it gets so heavy, we can't carry it no longer. So we have to put it on our back and carry it like a backpack. And when we learn something in life that will help us or help someone we know or family or something like that, we put that in our backpack. And then we take some junk out of the backpack. That way we can keep a balance. And we can get rid of the junk and put the good stuff in. That way if we ever get stuck and we don't know what to do in life, all we have to do is look in our backpack. It's all in the backpack. So life is one big backpack, right? Yes, ma'am. I guess that sounds pretty good, huh? It is good. Life is one big backpack. It, it is. <laughs> if you think about it, it makes real good sense. It's words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that's what you ask for. Uh, something of wisdom, right? And uh, this gentleman told me this a long time ago when I was young. And uh, I remembered it. And 
I use it. I keep it with me, and uh, I share it with other people because it's good knowledge. It's uh, mm -hmm. words of wisdom. All right. Let's get going, shall we? Yes, ma'am. Okay.